Today we got nine awesome habits you can start doing today and it doesn't have to be a new year to do it. You can do it any time for improvement. Hey there, njroot22.com here with another vlog. And today it's gonna be sort of the, like we got the idea because it's the uh, new, new year soon or by the time some of you might be seeing this, it'll already be 2020. And uh, we thought, why not? Let's throw our hat in the ring for sort of, a, this is not resolution, this is just uh, awesome habits, I call it. I, you need funny words these days to get anybody to watch your stuff, but uh, awesome habits are fabulous. I don't know what to call it, but these are like nine things I came up with that you can, uh, if you engage in these habits, it will improve your life. Um, I'm not guaranteeing it because, uh, I just can't, because uh, I. what am I going to do, pay you if you, it doesn't help you? I can't guarantee it. So I'm just going to rattle off a list of nine things, uh, habits you can uh, partake in starting now that will improve your life. And number one on my list, and there's no order here, by the way, this is just random order. Uh, There's not like a countdown, oh, the top 10 item. No, no, this is just nine items I came up with and I wrote it stream of thought. And the first item I have for you today is to avoid mainstream news and particularly the, the partisan politics that's happening now. Um, and I should say that I, you shouldn't turn it off completely. I mean, the TV, yes, but it, if you could just scan the headlines, uh, I recommend you use an RSS reader and you could subscribe to like the top or whatever, five popular uh, mainstream garbage news sites just to see what they're talking about because you kind of need to know what society is uh, buzzing about because that may be a problem in your neighborhood one day soon, whether it's riots or some st stupid laws or gender issues or, or whatever it is. You need to kind of know what society's talking about um, or trying to talk about. Um, and I recommend you find some alternative sites. They're not always easy to find because there's always somebody messing everything up. Um, or, or publishing misinformation and disinformation. It's, it's a crazy world out there to have to deal with, with all this information swilling around. So, but my best advice is to avoid the mainstream news because it's just bad news. Even your local New York news is just bad news. Always somebody got hurt. There was a big fire here. And like, you don't need to know about that stuff. Worry about your friends and your family and your own um, backyard and your life. And it, whatever, I, I can go on and on about politics and all this other stuff, but keep an eye on them and uh, that's about it. And my second tip, number two, is something I've been talking about every week here on this uh, channel. It's a going carnivore. Um, we're so happy that we're mainly meat and we've never been better when it comes to digestion, uh, food, uh, hunger, um, being satiated. Uh, I really do think carnivore is the the best th thing for humanity that has happened in the last few years. And, it, and I see it slowly taking off, but it, it really isn't. Um, but if you, you can't fathom just eating meat and, and not having your vegetables and fruits and all that other nonsense, um, it, you could do one thing by going low carb and with, with, the, with the focus on reducing the amount of sugar slash carbs. I think sugar and carbs are identical. Uh, people worry about the sugar content. Yeah, there's differences between uh, refined sugar and all this other stuff. Don't worry about it. Just reduce your, your carbs. Uh, if you're, you know, take a note, notepad and see how many carbs you're eating a day. And if it's in the hundreds, you're way, you're in, you're in big trouble later on. Even if you're skinny and you have good metabolism, you are in big trouble later on in your life. So if you can cut it down to 50 grams of carbs or less a day, preferably not more than 20 in a sitting, you should be okay. And that you, you'll lose weight, you'll be, you'll sleep better, your pains will go away. I'm telling you right now. But uh, avoid wheat too if you can. It's inflammatory for the human body. But that's another question for another day. My number three item for a good awesome habit to uh, 
partake in now and going forward any year, not just 2020, and that's question everything you see, including this video um, or what this website. Question, do I have any uh, ulterior motives? Are there people paying me? Um, and if you question it and you vet it out, you can find, find some good things going on. But question everything, whether it's uh, diet advice or new laws that are um, publish, oh, you get a $400 ticket for being on your phone, or uh, we have rainbow colored crosswalks now, and we have uh, all this stuff. Just whatever's happening in society and whatever's trending, just question everything. Um, because, like we've said in the past, uh, there's a dotted line somewhere to somebody who's benefiting from what's happening in the world today. And sometimes that dotted line is hidden, and you have to kind of deduce on who benefits by disrupting a government or or by changing the fuel source from oil to batteries there's always someone that can cash in so question everything and find out who the benefactor is of any societal shift or change in your environment there's always someone that's going to profit handsomely from something that goes on with society as a whole and number four this is kind of important for us. I mean, I think that everybody should reduce their phone usage. I know these smartphones we have are extremely um, high tech and they, they are, they're very capable of doing a lot of things. Apps everywhere, apps, 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 maps and coupons and, and all this other stuff and there's banking and I, I don't even know what else there is, but most people are on social media and they're interacting and they're getting dopamine hits and so on. I think that the phone is uh, is taking over, and I see people out and about um, just everywhere they go. They, the minute they pull into a parking spot, they look at the phone. They're, they look at their phone as they walk from their car to a store or a coffee shop. They're just constantly on this phone. They're, People in general are losing, except the younger generation, I guess under 60. Older people I see still actually pay attention. They look around. Um, but by losing touch with your environment, I think it's going to have a profound effect later on. They're going to say in 20 years, oh my God, uh, all these people were paying attention to their phone the whole time. They, they forgot how to be situationally aware and of, of their environment. And I think that's going to have a bad effect at some point in the future. So I, I like to just be where I am and not be on a phone. If I, I use my phone sometimes at home. Um, just the way I would use a computer at home. I don't lug my computer everywhere I go. And I, that's sort of what happened with the phone. You have almost the capability of a computer with you at all times. And while it's a good resource for some things, I think overconsumption, overuse is a bad thing. So the next thing, it's sort of similar, but it's cutting the cord on your television set or video monitor, whatever you want to call it. Um, I call it mind programming, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, whether it's a entertaining TV show, whether it's a comedy, drama, or no matter what, um, news, for instance, um, all these things, I, I, I think of it as mind programming. And it's very addictive, it's intelligently written, it's psychologically manipulative. Um, and that's why I know that if I, you know, ordered, I don't have Netflix, but if I started watching seasons of things, I almost, the other day, I was at the library and we get videos for our kids because as much as I fought it tooth and nail to not put my kids in front of the TV, sometimes your, your hands are tied so bad and I'm, I will admit that we will throw them in front of a uh, PBS kids show like the Bernstein Bears or something like that um, just to, to keep them occupied. And it's, it's sad because it, that's another story for another day, but um, I know that if I, uh, I, I saw at the library they had MacGyver seasons one through ten or I don't know how many seasons it was, and I'm like I remember watching that as a kid. I'm like, oh, let me let me watch it again, uh, and I knew I had it in my hand and I put it back on the shelf because I knew if I started watching it, um, I would without a doubt. Uh, be hooked on it and I would, I would waste hundreds of hours of my life sitting there watching the show and, and enjoy it. Although MacGyver is probably a good show because it really did teach you situational awareness and making do. What can I do with this glue and this chisel if I'm stuck somewhere? You can, you can use things like that. So, but I think TV is, is a passive activity and should be cut. Uh, that, my next little tip is um, 
reading. Uh, I think you should read, 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 read books, um, not just uh, fantasy novels or romance. Or I think history and psychology are, are some of the best books you can read. Um, I'm not going to get into the authors and stuff like that, but I think some of the authors you might find interesting are authors that may have been critically um, attacked when they came out with their books. Uh, I'm reading a, an author now, Robert Ant, uh, Anton Wilson, and his books, and he was all into that LSD stuff and Timothy Leary. And their, those books were pretty much attacked and demonized by mainstream medicine and ideas, conservative ideas, but they're really eye-opening and I think that's something you need to challenge, stretch the limits of your mind. So read as much as you can instead of using those hundreds of hours to watch uh, binge watching. Um, that's something I think is good. And number uh, seven here is, is, is sort of a dual thing. It's a practicality and frugalness. And by practicality I mean do it yourself. Um, learn how to fix things. Uh, get skilled in tools. Uh, do things smart. I think that's it's kind of a general thing to talk about here, but and frugalness in terms of asking yourself, do you really need that latest thing? Can I deal with used? I think challenging yourself not to get the latest and greatest thing is, is a real good first step in combating consumerism um, and not getting caught up uh, in the trends of things that are hot today and then a year from now it's, it's already obsolete and replaced by something. It's this vicious cycle that uh, happens in our world. And quickly moving over to number eight here and this is with all the time you've saved by not having your phone, not watching TV and, and having a, a mindset of questioning everything, I think one of the good things you can do with your newfound skills is obs observe society. Watch people. When you go, don't just spend your time chatting with your friends digitally. It's, by being in the moment and being where you are in your environment, I think you could start picking up on things. And when you watch how other people uh, behave in groups and, and what they're talking about, listen to what other people are talking about, you can sort of really get a, a good understanding of what's happening in the world and make better decisions going forward. It's just fun to do also to watch how things that happen over here affect people in general over here. And you could see it. Um, maybe you can even make some money uh, on it if you can if you can really pick up on on it. If you can market to people on their phone, somehow maybe you can make you. That's what Gary V says all the time. And last but not least, here this is a very difficult one. It's it's trying to solve any problem you may have with toxic people, and you know you know who they are. Everybody has them in their lives, uh, and it's not just people who disagree with you or like different things or have different political beliefs. It's uh, there's people, you know, narcissists, psychopaths, and sociopaths that are out there, and everybody has them to some degree. And they're, sometimes it's kind of hard to solve the problem because of the complexity involved. I, I'm not going to get into it, but some you can't just get rid of. But in some cases, the only way to deal with these type of people is to completely cut the cord on them too. But that's, uh, that's something that's it's very tricky to deal with. Uh, and that's, that's about it. I really do think the phone is one of the big things to uh, contend with and that if you can just keep it in your pocket or turn it off or not even need it, it does a lot to keep the brain um, strong. And I think having a strong brain and an uninfluenced brain is very important for not just 2019, 2020, and beyond, but always. So that's it. Please hit the subscribe button and the like button and all that. I need more subscribers. I need to get to 1,000. I'm eventually going to have it uh, one of these days. I have to change my keywords on my YouTube channel. I think that's what's holding me back. And that's it. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you next video.